Okay, so we're moving on to fiscal policy. Um, and essentially what fiscal policy is, is um, really it's just increasing or decreasing that G term, government expenditure, within the aggregate demand for um, aggregate expenditure framework, um, or um, decreasing your disposable income by managing or in decreasing, increasing your disposable income by managing that T term, the taxes that are sub subtracted from national income. Right. Um, and using that to either shift up the consumption uh, schedule or uh, the overall aggregate expenditure schedule. OK, so to shift the consumption or aggregate expenditure schedules um, in order to uh, get on a higher or lower demand side equilibrium um, so that we can um, uh, overall shift out demand. OK. Where are we at? Okay. So, come on. In, in the case that you're in an inflationary environment or a recessionary environment, can the government do better than relying on the self correcting mechanism? And remember from the lecture that is still part of this lecture, um, the, the last lecture slides, particularly for recessions, the self-correcting mechanism was uh, pretty pretty weak and, and pretty slow because it relied on decreasing prices. And we know that uh, because of sticky wages and sticky prices, particularly on the downward side, um, that's less reactive. It's going to take a while. Um, so can, can the government do better, uh, particularly in terms of recession, but also in terms of inflation, well, technically? Um, it's not really common, um, but particularly in terms of recession, can the government do better to um, to correct uh, for the business cycle and to, to set it back on course? Um, moreover, the government does have a role in just kind of making people's lives feel a little easier. Um, so not, not all fiscal policy needs to be about correcting the business cycle. Some of it's just about oh, hey, you're back on rent because of this, this crazy business cycle thing that happened because of pandemic, for instance. Um, hey, like, regardless of whether this shifts out the aggregate expenditure curve, we could just make it, you know, nicer for people, right? Um, that is a role that the government can provide. Um, now, whether you think that's what the government can, should or should not do, or whether it's efficient or not, is a different story. But it's another another function of fiscal policy. Um, so I, I don't want to make the value judgment. Is it good to help people pay rent? Um, that's not a really an economist's role um, in terms of on the normative side. Is it is it philosophically good? Um, but on the quote unquote positive side, on the, the things that economists can't answer, um, Helping people pay rent probably will shift out the aggregate expenditure schedule and therefore shift out demand and therefore lead to um, uh, more uh, more of a correction than the self-correcting mechanism for a recessionary environment would, would do. So regardless of whether you think the government should or should not be doing things for philosophical reasons. Maybe you don't think that they should be taxing you in order to pay for somebody else. That's a perfectly valid uh, point. Um, I, I, I'm not a philosoph philosopher. I'm not going to get into whether that's, um, whether that's the right thing to do on that end. But I can tell you that, um, you know, taxing from someone in order to pay for shifting out the aggregate expenditure curve probably will benefit both parties involved. If the if the government does it right, and if there's some multiplier, those two things are uh, big ifs. Um, just as an aside, I've I've had to deal with the IRS for the last like two weeks. Oh. I, ha, if there is a, a multiplier for government expenditure, show me it because for for what it looks like, it looks like it's just wasted. Like whatever money we go to pay for the IRS, just looks like a waste. I'm of the opinion that 
the government should just tell you what you owe and you should just get a bill at the end of the year. And if you want to dispute it, that's fine. You can go ahead and dispute it. You know, you go to an accountant or whatever, but the government has accountants that are double checking your work anyway. They can tell you what you owe. Just do it. Uh, but there's a big H&R Block lobby uh, saying, no, we, we want people to pay for a tax accountant so that we get get them their, their, their refunds. And it's like, no, you just you just want to you just want to profit off this law. Uh, anyway, that's that's I'm, I'm I'm losing my mind dealing with the IRS. It is, it is, they are a if they if they were a private company, they would be bankrupt in two years. How, how they collect any amount of money is beyond me because they're even just their website is terrible. That's that's my spiel. <laughs> so. If you believe that the government shouldn't tax because their tax dollars aren't being used effectively, you're probably not completely wrong. I'll put it like that. But uh, that, anyway, <laughs> I've gone on a tangent. Okay, so the economy's self mechanism works very slowly. Wages and prices are slow to adjust, especially downward. So if you're in a recession um, and you want aggregate supply to shift outwards um, by lowering wages, or if you're in a recession, you would you do want aggregate supply to shift downward while aggregate demand shifts outwards. Okay, so just uh, bear with me for a second. So if you're in a recessionary gap, okay. Um, so far back, I can take this. All right. Uh, too far now. Uh, and it keeps going. Stop, 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 stop where you are. No, nope, it's keep, it's keep going. All right, here we go. All right, so we're in a recessionary gap. We could correct it with the supply shift outwards. Okay, leading to deflation or particularly because of deflation, or a demand shift upwards, okay, right, I should say outward as well. Um, okay, so one or the other, so that, that would lead to inflation, or probably somewhere in between would be like a nice little sweet spot. Where did that, there it goes. So if we could have supply shift a little bit outwards, while demand shifts outwards, that would be like bingo, because then there's no uh, no no price change at all, okay? Or depending on the like depending on how far each shifts outwards. But the way that I have it, there's no price change at all, okay? So we want some combination of aggregate supply shifting outwards, aggregate demand shifting outwards. So um, we could have better technology or new inputs, lower wages that would shift aggregate supply outwards um, for aggregate demand. Changes in consumption, investment, government expenditure, um, or net exports. Okay. So the government can shift out aggregate demand um, using fiscal policy. Okay. So they can use, they can, right? Remember I said any component of aggregate expenditure, right? Immediately, one one of them is easier to, to monitor than the others, and that's your government expenditure, right? They can directly increase government expenditure in order to raise the aggregate expenditure in order to shift out aggregate demand for because there's there's no re reacting price change when you just increase government expenditure, right? Um, I mean, they, they could also decrease taxes, which would raise consumption expenditure because it's as though you have more disposable or you do have more disposable income. It's not as though you have more disposable income. So that would raise consumption uh, expenditure, which would then also lead to additional aggregate expenditure. Um, they, they could make things better for business as well. Um, we'll talk about that towards the tail end. That would be like supply side, um, supply side changes. So that would be like decreasing the tax for business, um, 
and, and hoping that pushes the aggregate supply curve out. Um, so th those are those are some of the government mechanisms that we can uh, directly control. Okay, but the um, okay, so yeah, so we can in in terms of the demand side, they could either spend or tax. Okay, and supply side, they can change taxes. Okay. So let's just focus in on demand for a second. We'll go to supply side later on in the lecture, um, probably on Monday. But um, if if they want, let's say we're in an inflationary gap, we can increase the taxes, decrease disposable income, shift down aggregate expenditure. So let me show that here. Okay, so if we're in an, in an inflationary gap, Okay, so potential GDP is below the equilibrium GDP, all right? We could decrease taxes, or, sorry, increase taxes. What that's going to do is that's going to lead to uh, a decrease in disposable income, which is going to lead to a decrease in consumption, okay? Going to drop the equilibrium GDP, okay? So... Raising taxes, we're going to drop the equilibrium GDP, okay? So since we're in an inflationary gap, oh, I thought, I, oh, I didn't draw it over here. We'll move. Okay, so, in, so we've decreased um, the, out, the aggregate demand without a corresponding decrease in price, right? So we didn't change prices or and prices themselves didn't change, okay? So that means that for every price level, demand has to be lower, meaning we're here, okay? Uh, wherever, uh, we gotta go even further down. We are here, <laughs> okay? So we've decreased aggregate demand by virtue of increasing taxes. So again, the mechanism is we increased taxes that decreased disposable income, right? Prices haven't changed, so um, the aggregate expenditure schedule is going to shift down because disposable income is going to shift consumption down, right? Um so we're, we're down here now, okay, which is then going to shift aggregate demand to the left because, again, prices haven't changed. Um, so now we're at a lower equilibrium GDP. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Or was this before this? I guess it was here. Okay. Um, alternatively, if you want to decrease taxes, the, the thing works in reverse. So decreasing taxes increases disposable income. That's going to shift the consumption schedule. Um, uh, really, it's, it's actually not going to shift the consumption. I should be careful. The consumption schedule is going to move to the right along the curve. But... The aggregate expenditure schedule, which isn't disposable income but national income, is going to shift up. Okay, so let me be a little clear on that because I, um, I don't want to be cavalier and just say things and like have you guys believe me and then be like, oh no, J.K. So if we have our consumption function, okay, on the Come on, move. On the x-axis is disposable income. On the y-axis is consumption. Okay. So luckily I have this little thing here. So I can just <laughs> draw it like this.
All right. So really, if we increase taxes, we're moving from a point like here to a point like here. Okay. So we're not actually shifting the consumption schedule, and I'm actually going to change that now because I don't want I don't like that that it says that. So consumption moves up along the consumption function. Here it moves down along the consumption function. I'm just going to save this guy. All right. Sorry about that. Um, I want to be 100% clear. And I do think that it might have complicated things a little more, but is, this is the technically correct interpretation. So consumption shifts along the curve okay let's say this is a increase in taxes increase in taxes leads to lower di disposable income which is to national income minus uh, you can say y for national income minus t All right, but on the uh, aggregate expenditure schedule, this is actually going to be a shift, and the the, the reason is a little a little weird, right? So the disposable income is on the consumption schedule, the x-axis of the consumption uh, function. On the x-axis of the aggregate expenditure schedule is GDP. What is that? That's Y, it's not Y minus T, okay? So even though consumption, the consumption function hasn't shifted, okay? Consumption itself has shifted downwards, okay? On the aggregate expenditure schedule. Because this is, um, you're not moving down, you're not moving to the left here, okay? You're moving uh, down essentially, right? So maybe maybe it's more even more helpful if I put in numbers. Okay, so if y y equals twenty and c equals um, point two, or let's say point eight, y. Come on, 0.8y minus t, and t equals, let's say, 1, okay? If I, if t goes up from 1 to 2, right, consumption, if t goes up from 1 to 2, C changes from, uh, let's make this like 5. It's easier to calculate. So 5 to 10 then. Okay. So before consumption was 0.8 times 15. Um, so I think that's 90. Uh, sorry, 9. Now consumption is going to be 0.8 uh, times 10, which is 8. Okay, but this is the only thing that's changed. The 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 x the uh, disposable income, right? So it's just a shift along the curve. It's, it's not that this function has changed, right? This function is still the same. It's just the the value of the independent variable y minus t is is different. Okay. However, for aggregate expenditure, y is going to be the same point. It's going to be um, 20, okay? But aggregate expenditure has gone down by 1 because consumption has gone down by 1, okay? So for the same y, you used to have i plus g plus x minus im 
plus 9, because 9 was your consumption. Now you have y, uh, i plus g plus x minus i m plus 8. But y is still the same, so this is going to be, this was, was 20, comma, 9 plus all the rest. Now it's 20, comma, 8 plus all the rest. So it's gone down by 1, shifting down the function. Okay. I should be very, I just wanted to be very clear about, about that. Okay. And then that's going to shift down your demand curve, right? Because the price level hasn't changed. Okay, so for the same price level, you have a lower output. Okay, so for the same price level, lower output, lower GDP. All right. Um, I'm going to stop there. Uh, oh, sorry. Let's. All right. I did have actually have those in for a reason. No, I don't like that. Sorry. I stick with the yeah. I, I I like this better. I'm gonna just in fact change this modified consumption schedule because we're plotting with respect to y not di okay so that's going to shift the the consumption function if you're using y which is then going to shift down your aggregate expenditure or you know shift down or out depending if it's an increase or decrease um, which in turn is then going to lead to a lower demand curve okay a leftward shift of the demand curve um, so that, that's how taxes can affect, um, can get you out of a um, uh, uh, recessionary, inflationary gap to some extent. Of course, you can only lower taxes to, to the amount that they, to, to zero, um, and you can only increase taxes to 100%. And <laughs> that, that's a hard sell, um, particularly in America. But um, I'm going to stop there. We can pick up fiscal policy uh, on Monday. All right. Everybody have a good weekend. Uh, I will hopefully see some of you guys on Monday. All right.